Hey guys, this is Al Snow, former WWE superstar, and you're watching Back to the Movies with Sean Evans. No, you can't have any popcorn because you have to watch your figure, okay? Take it away, Sean. We Tonight on the show, we're joined by WWE star and actor, Mr. Al Snow. How are you doing today, sir? Doing very well. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. So, now it seems the logical step for wrestling stars in our day and age to kind of migrate into movies, but you were doing it way before this fashion was even mainstream. I mean, how did it all start for you, and what made you want to do movies? Well, like you'd said, it, it's it's the natural a progression, a natural extension of what I've been doing for so long. Uh, I've been in the wrestling business for 33 years, so, uh, but it's a different world. It's got different expectations, uh, different uh, rules, uh, different etiquette um, that you can't just simply step in and, you know, hit the ground running. You've got to uh, start, you know, um, you know, if you get a great opportunity, that's uh, one thing, but it's another entirely to, you um, step in and slowly pay your dues and kind of earn the pro learn the process and earn your your place within the world of acting um, because wrestlers aren't really actors they're more kind of reactors i would say um and if they are any type of actor it would be more of a um uh, what kind of a type of acting they they call that where it's uh where they become the character um I think it's just character acting. I think you've got it. Uh, it's it's more. I forget the 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 uh, term that they use in acting, and I always forget it whenever I go to mention this. Uh, but you know, where you adopt or you literally become twenty four hours a day the the character, because for a wrestler, the character they play is simply an extension of who they really are. It's just the volume turned way up, so uh, it's a lot easier than it is say, for instance, uh, acting uh, and becoming a character that's completely outside of yourself. Um, and not to mention, in wrestling, you know, you only have one take. Uh, you're kind of free uh, to improv as much as you want, as long as you get across the information that needs to be gotten across, if they want it gotten across. And, um, and you can, you know, re you can play off the audience. You get that immediate... Uh, connection, um, where and you have to make your personality big enough to feed, feel, fill a twenty thousand seat arena. Where in acting, you have to make it big enough to just fill the camera, and uh, and you've got to follow a little more stricter lines, you know, with acting. Do you so. feel that's a bigger pressure of you, though? I mean, when you're in the ring, is there a bigger pressure for you to to impress those people right there and then? Whereas film, maybe it's a bit more relaxed on your end because you have. To wait and go through the motions before people can finally see it on film actually i feel more pressure doing the acting than oh, i do wow. <laughs> because i can i can gauge and feel what i'm doing while i'm doing it and then adjust accordingly uh based on the audience right then and there where with acting you've got a you the only feedback you're going to get to get from the director you know um or the other people around on set and then you've got to wait who knows how long it takes you know for for a movie to come out to an audience and then for you to see just your performance and how well it was wow okay so we're here today to to talk about your latest movie installment and that is lake erie now can you give us a little overview of your character within the movie and how do you fit within the storyline well lake erie is uh so you know awesome story uh it was it, it deals with an alternate reality and, and uh, you know, uh, a gateway to that alternate reality that's uh, almost like limbo, I would say. Um, and it's filled with uh, physical representations of seven deadly sins, um, which, you know, uh, I'm uh, wrath, anger, um, 
Well, actually, I'm not very an angry guy. I'm pretty easy going. But you seem quite chilled out, though. I must yeah, say. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. You know, I'm not that not that worked up. But uh, I got to play Wrath, and then of course there's you know Envy and you know Sloth and etc. And uh, and uh, Lust. Uh, she was she was very lustful. Um, very hot. Um, she, sounds, she sounds hot. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, the, the heroine crosses over into this world and, you know, and then, and then throughout the movie, um, you know, um, to build the suspense and the um, tension, I cross over into her world periodically and threaten and um, malevolent and, you know, terrorize her until the very end. Do you actually still wrestle with Head on the independent circuit? Yes, yes. Oh, that's fantastic. I'd love to yeah. see that sometime. Cause, I, mean, uh, I mean, I grew up as a kid, obviously, watching Al Snow kicking some ass across the, the WWE and ECW. And every time I, I used to say when I was little, I was like, why, why is he carrying that head? I mean, how, well, did that, how did that come about? What made you decide that you wanted to embody that character of head? Uh, at the time, I was very frustrated and was trying to show that frustration, have find an outlet and, um, you know, uh, trying to develop a character that offered a nervous breakdown and uh, uh, spent time uh, reading a book on abnormal psychology and found a lady in there that was a case study. She had uh, paranoid schizophrenia and then she had a transference disorder, meaning she transferred her sickness onto the very inanimate objects that she could hear the voices from. So I literally found a styrofoam head and figured I would treat it as if it were real and speaking to me and that it was crazy. I wasn't that I was the healthy one and it was anyone. And, uh, and it connected, you know, thank God it connected with the audience and resonated. And, uh, you know, um, and like I said, it was just, it's just me with the volume turned weight up because it was a way to, uh, express that frustration at the time that I was feeling. And, uh, professionally and uh so i hear you got to wear some cool makeup and prosthetics in lake erie i mean what was that like um embodying this new character with all this layering of makeup and prosthetics and did you go out in the public dressed in this costume and scare some of the locals i wanted to <laughs> go to stores and walk around and you know um but you know uh stacy lockhart and tiffany hudson they were such great um makeup artists and they spent literally the first the first day they spent hours uh airbrushing and painting me and my skin and by and applying appliances and uh you know it was amazing to watch and be a part of it the the the, the process of them literally turning me into a different creature a different visually not just character wise um which made it easier too to to adopt the character because you kind of look at it now, and uh, the the hardest part though was the uh, the contacts because uh, obviously I don't have exactly the biggest eyes and uh, and I've never worn contacts at all. These are just reading glasses, um, uh, bifocals, and uh, and uh, so it took them you know two two or three girls the makeup girls to pry open my eyes and stuff them in there. <laughs> Took about 45 minutes each time they wanted to put them in. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I it bet. wasn't easy to get them in there. I bet, I bet. <laughs> now, yeah. Meredith also tells me that you, you stunt coordinated the movie as well as it starred in it. I mean, did it help having your WWE training helping out with the coordinating stunts? I mean, or does that kind of thing come easy to you, especially since all your life you've kind of been training hard to, to land the right way to coordinate these fights in as safe as possible manner? Did it come quite easily to you? You know, what I do in the ring is different than what you would do on film because I have, you know, I have to be aware of all four sides yeah. and an audience being able to look through it in all four sides. Or with the camera, you've, you've got, you know, you can position yourself and the camera to where you don't have to, you know, um, do it to a degree to where there's no daylight um, between you and whatever physical activity you're doing. But it does help out dramatically um with you know when i'm working with 
one of the actors or actresses and I'm doing something physical with them and, you know, I'm able to communicate exactly what's going to occur, where they're going to go, how they're going to feel and how I can help them control it and how I, you know, and protect them and make them feel comfortable and safe in doing so. And then yet still make it look very realistic. So it does help. Fantastic. I mean, looking back on your time on set, was there a favorite memory that stands out or anything, something that really sticks in your mind from the actual set of the movie? Uh, God, the whole time was just such, you know, so enjoyable and such a great, you know, the people were so awesome, the, the cast and the crew. And, you know, that's really part of the reason, well, large part of the reason why I have decided to kind of pursue a career in acting is because of the, you know, with with wrestling, you you get a com- camaraderie with the people that you work with, and um, and then with acting, you get that same thing, and um, and everybody was just so awesome, just so terrific to, you know, get to spend time with, and uh, we had so many different, you know, moments while on set um, that uh, it'd be tough just to pick one. I mean, it was, it was, you know, probably my favorite was when we were, we were actually like, um, because the house that we filmed at was supposed to be, uh, genuinely haunted. Oh, that was my next question. Yeah. Did yeah. anything jump out at you or freak you out at all? No, but if it had, I'd have probably ran out of the house. So. Oh, I was thinking you were going to like give it the snow plow or something. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> probably not. Yeah. But we went, you know, went on a little bit of a ghost hunt trying to, you know, find stuff. And, uh, you know, that was, that was fun, you know? A bunch of big kids looking yeah. around the house. <laughs> I bet, I bet. Now, going back to the WWE, I mean, we see legends returning all the time. I mean, obviously wrestling, uh, ECW and WWE, WWE has a special place in your heart. I mean, would you like to return one day, or is the independent circuit where your heart lies at the moment? No, I would be more than happy to. I mean, it would be uh, it'd be a great opportunity because to get back on a stage of that magnitude and get to perform again would be would be awesome it just would be you know such a great uh chance and a a tremendous compliment you know to be be allowed to come back and perform one more time would be uh would be just it really would be an enjoyable experience yeah i'm sure i mean i I don't want to tempt fate here but i definitely nominate you in the wwe hall of fame sometime (laughs) soon well i don't know if i i don't know if i can rate that high but uh but um you know, it would be certainly a, an incredible honor and, and, and a very unexpected one at that. Well, you've got my vote, that's for sure. Thank you. And I, mean, I appreciate that. At least you've got one, right? <laughs> yeah, at least I've got one. Yeah, so fair enough. I mean, I watched you wrestle week in, week out, and it's an absolute pleasure to speak to you tonight without referring too much to wrestling. We've got to focus it all on Lake Erie here. But I just wanted to throw this last question in. And I mean... A few months ago, we interviewed Mick Foley on the page, and we know that you guys are, are both quite good buddies. I mean, do you guys still keep in touch and get up to mischief? Yeah, we uh, we still keep in contact. Maybe not as much as we have in the past. It's it's difficult because we're both always working and you know going forward and trying to you know find the next thing. Um, so it's hard to stay connected, but uh, we still stay in contact and. You know, still throw jokes back and forth. My last and most important question: How is Head doing? I haven't seen her for a while. Is she oh, looking forward to Christmas? Oh, they're doing. They, they, you know, Head always looks forward to Christmas every year. I mean, they get so excited. I mean, they've got their own little. Uh, uh, what do you guys call the calendars in yeah, the UK? The Advent calendars. Yeah. Advent calendars. Yeah, yeah. Can't wait every day to open up another door. You know, and just. <laughs> how does she manage that then with her teeth? <laughs> uh, I, I have to do it. You know. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. It makes you know, sense. Uh, yeah, you know, it's very excited. You know, I can't wait to get a new hat or earmuffs or a scarf, you know, or glasses because it's not like, you know, I can give them gloves because yeah, I did exactly. one year and they got so upset because I gave them gloves. I'm you know, surprised. Yeah, it was, you know, what am I going to do with them? I Except for, you know, a mm, uh, I got the, I got the, uh, got it. <laughs> it very, bad, very, it very, so bad. <laughs> very witty. Thank you very much, man. So it's been a great time speaking to you tonight, Al. It's been an absolute pleasure. All the best with the movie. Have a great Christmas. Thank you very much. And a happy new year. You too as well.